Christ. <laughs> Each winter, groups of wild starlings are responsible for what is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable natural spectacles in the British Isles. From October every year, flocks of over a million starlings gather and swarm in incredible aerobatic displays before they settle to roost. These birds know there's safety in numbers. Stunning footage like this can only be filmed from a distance to avoid disturbance. But often, filmmakers want to get a lot closer. Every day, documentaries, dramas and films bring us intimate footage of wildlife in action. But for these more demanding shots, trained animals are often used. And so the filmmakers turn to professional handlers and trainers, like Lloyd Buck. Lloyd and his wife Rose have trained a wide range of the birds we often see on our screens. But when they were approached to train a group of starlings, they were astonished by what Arnie and his friends were capable of. Hey! Well, having kind of met a few bird trainers in my life, I have to say, most of the time it's golden eagles, um, goshawks, peregrines, but starlings, why a starling, Lloyd? We were approached by a film company two years ago. The director particularly wanted a starling for the role within the movie. Nobody captive breeds starlings, so we had to get a license from Natural England to get them at a few days old, because obviously you want to hand raise them so they get really tame, so they'll fly with you and want to work with you within a film set. They see you as their parent. You become the parent. That's why it requires so much time and effort. Oh, Ooh. hovering. Lloyd and Rose have spent two years training Arnie and six other starlings and were surprised to find they each had individual personalities. They're all very different. We've got three here. You've got Arthur, Ernie and little Flo here. And they all are totally different in their characters. In what way? In some are more nervous than others. Arnie's probably the most bold and cheeky. Dennis and CC will be a little bit more nervous and apprehensive initially till they get to know you. But they're very good once they get to know you. Look at that. That's the way I expect to see starlings, all together. In the wild, gregarious starlings display other remarkable behaviours. After roosting, they chatter for around 15 minutes before falling silent. Some scientists have suggested this is a social bonding exercise, whilst others argue they're communicating valuable information, like the top local feeding locations. Lloyd, too, has noticed their impressive communication skills in his flock. Say hello. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> he is. He's mimicking. He is, and the funny thing is we haven't taught him any of that. He, he's just picked it up. If you're on the mobile, of course, you're saying yep all the time. You say hello to him in the morning when we first see them, so they just picked all that up. Does he say any other words? Not when he's out and about like this, but in the evening, that's when they'll say whole things like, um, Rose sometimes says to them, you want kisses? And he'll say that, and some of the others will say that as well. He's singing for his supper, basically. He is, he knows if, he, if he's a good boy. And not, watch this, he'll flip Lily off. <laughs> Do you know what's interesting about that? Just shows you how clever these little guys are. He knows, flip the lid off, the food's inside, and he knows how to get the lid off. From just a few days old, Arnie bonded not only with Lloyd, but with his car as well. He sees them as fellow starlings, and his instinct to flock allows us to capture the kind of remarkable close-ups usually only seen with larger birds. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> come on, come on! Right it's the most it. incredible view! Yeah, oh, wow, perfect. right next to us! Come on, little pal, look at that! That's it, that's that was sensational! <laughs> So the next time you see a huge flock of starlings dance across the sky in unison, remember, they might all look the same, but they each have their own individual personalities, just like Arnie. You are one greedy, clever little bird. Well, he's always got a bird on his arm, and tonight is no <laughs> exception. Mike, who's this? This is Charlie. He's a blue and gold macaw. He comes from um, uh, Flamingo Land in, um, in Malton, but today he is the best talker. He's astonishing. What Riff? can he say? Yes, hello, Charlie. No, he's just eating. <laughs> no, that's OK. Just that's like me sometimes. Well, I... it's like Charlie. He's nervous, <laughs> you know. Here we go. Let's have another go. Hello. 
It's classic. Hello. No, he's now yeah. got a map. Say chicken. <laughs> this he's is entirely my... Try talk, talking to me instead. Well, I know he's I'll been very quiet, chicken. Mike. But uh, why do birds learn to speak? What, what's the, what's well, the birds learn to speak for a number of reasons, actually. Um, what they, it's primarily the kind of the sociable or flocking birds that kind of get together. Always they're chatting to one another. And so you take one of these flocking birds out, primarily parrots or starlings, things like that, and what they do is they think the humans around them are their mates, and they chat away to them, and they learn by rote, or kind of like by mimicking, and all of a sudden, hey, press the talking. <laughs> Say chicken, chicken. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Say dog. Dog. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us a kiss, give us a kiss. Oh. And oh, Mike, you go. found some of the famous talking birds from the past. Oh, he said peanut. Did you hear him say peanut? <laughs> <laughs> he wants a peanut, bless him. We've got a butchery girl called Sparky. Yeah. This is a famous bird in Newcastle on time. Yeah. And um, he won a talking competition. And from there, he kind of went to have his uh, voice recorded by Parlophone Records. He's had records. He's um, done all manner of things. And have a look at this amazing footage of him talking. They call me pretty sparky. I'm just a little bad. But I can talk and chatter all the day. Mastery rhymes plainly can be heard. I'm a clever little budgie, aren't I? Eh? I am. I am reliably no informed that is the, the budget talking, and he can still be seen up in Newcastle one time. Oh, Unfortunately, he's stuffed. And he's also a ventriloquist, that yeah. bird. He wasn't even moving his feet. <laughs> I tell you, you, you can't beat northern birds. You really can't. Anyway, <laughs> Mike, thanks ever so much. Cheers, yeah. Charlie. Enjoy the peanuts. Yeah. Now then, flat pack furniture can be fiddly. Okay, you get it home, there's always a screw missing, and the whole chest of drawers falls apart as soon as you put a pair of socks in the drawer. That's true. Uh, but at least your life doesn't depend on it. Marty Johnson.